chiropractor in Bloomsbury, Pennsylvania. Uh, several weeks ago, I went on a trip overseas, and I had an opportunity to really do and see a lot of very beautiful things, and it gave me some time during the day to just uh, hang out in some parks and write a bit and think about things. And, uh, you know, it was nice to have a trip where it was just focused on beauty. And I feel like that's something I want to bring more into the world, especially in my office, bringing more beauty. And I was thinking about with chiropractic, almost like what Fernando was saying about giving people more. I see it that I want to refine what I do and elevate it. And then um, the question is, how do you do that? And uh, that's still a work in progress. But I'm really intently on that. And it's been interesting. Since I've been back, I've been having a lot of people kind of uh, come out of the woodwork. So that's been pretty cool. So I have like, it was nice to take a break because I'm in the office six days a week. And that's kind of a lot, but it was nice to take a week off, get refreshed, get back in the game. And then I had my busiest day ever, the day I was first back in the office. And I was only back in town about six hours before everything uh, started in the office. That's right. Wow. Now you want to ask Alex anything? Anyone? Anyone? You said out. Oh wait, go ahead, Tori. You go. <laughs> what was the most beautiful thing you saw on your trip? What, if you could narrow it down? Uh, I went to six concerts while I was there. One of them in particular at uh, Royal Albert Hall was just so stunning. The music, the just the sights of the hall, and it was packed. And it's nice to see. Like 5,000 people really into going to a classical concert, which is not something you typically see that much in the U.S. Anyone else like to ask Alex anything? Well, Alex, you made the statement to refine what I do and elevate it. Yes. So what does that mean? Well, I'm still working on that, but so much of it has been kind of like, because I'm used to being in the office so much during the week, Sometimes being in the midst of something, you don't always really have the opportunity to reflect. And having that week off, I did reflect quite a bit. Just being much more in the present, working on people, and being focused completely. I have a mind where I tend to wander quite a bit. And since I've been back, I think I've been quite a bit better with that. And just not allowing myself to worry about other things and just focus on that person under my hands. Anyone else would like to ask Alex anything? Anyone? Nancy Brown. Yeah, I'm yeah, just throwing our work tonight. <laughs> um, Alex, did you ever play uh, classical music in your office? Do you play classical music in your office? I do. Usually I have it on in the background most of the day. That's one thing I really love about having my own practice, that I can have on what I want. Is there yeah. a particular? Do you change it, the music? Or Quite a bit. Everything from chamber music to orchestral to some solo stuff. So. All right, Alex. Thank you. Gracias. Thanks, Mark. Excellent. All right, clap for some more. The floor is open for whoever would like to come up. Nancy, when you speak, we hear you. It's, just a, it's choppy, but we can still hear what you're saying. Victoria with a K. <laughs> hey everyone. Um, hi guys. Hi Jack. <laughs> um, Tori Mendez, um, visiting wife of a chiropractor, I guess mm -hmm. tonight. <laughs> um, I guess a couple of things. Um, well, to update you on what we've been doing in Pennsylvania, um, we've been doing a lot of farming and <laughs> fence building. Fernando has built a fortress for us for our garden. And um, we've had just uh, lots of kids, lots of sleepovers, uh, lake trips, uh, pool trips, lots of good stuff. Um, and like Alex, you know, just getting out and, and doing something different. Um, and obviously, we've been doing a lot of things different for the last year since we moved. Um, since the kids and I went to Bro um, left Brooklyn and went to Jonestown, Pennsylvania. 
and um, it's been wonderful. I mean, if you're looking to surround yourself with beauty, you can't forget, you know, where you are. And even living in Brooklyn, sometimes I would forget where we were and how close we were to the ocean and how close we were to beaches and water and. Um, the fact that I was living on an island, but you know your world becomes so small or you're so focused on what you're doing every day You kind of forget the big picture um, if you will um, So I, and I've also been doing some farming um, At another place so last Friday we I, I helped people process chickens and we processed 190 chickens um, and I just kind of joke with the kids that I, I, I'm cleaning a lot of chickens and Liam Neeson keeps going through my head that I have a certain set of skills and I <laughs> rip parts out. But anyway, it's just kind of a, it's a different experience, something I never thought I would be doing. Um, you know, I have two years postgraduate and <laughs> I don't think it's required for that job. But, but I also work markets, uh, that they have markets every second and fourth. Uh, Saturday and um, it's really it's really awesome to see the people that come and um, how interested people are in buying uh, grass-fed uh, or you know good food and um, so that's been that's been inspiring um, and lots of fun uh, just working with people and and uh, getting to know a, a lot of the people in our area um, uh, otherwise, uh, how much time do we have? 15 seconds. Oh, uh, I guess I'll get up and talk again later about the other thing. So that's that's our update. Anyone <laughs> like to ask Tori anything? What was the other thing you want to talk about? There you go. Oh. <laughs> Um, I've been watching a series of interviews, and maybe some of you have seen this before, but um, it's called The Soft White Underbelly. and. Just given my history, um, I used to, you know, my degree is in uh, law enforcement and um, has, so it's really interesting for me to watch because a lot of the interviews are with um, addicts um, or people, but there was uh, one particular interview that was really interesting for me about, and he was a corrupt New York City police officer and he just came in and mm -hmm. And the way that he spoke, he could just talk and tell stories for 90 minutes. And, mm -hmm. and he kind of just described how, how quickly, um, you know, how quickly he was making wrong decisions. And, it's, and, and then time and time again, interview after interview, this is the man that does it. And I forget his name, forgive me, but it's, um, he is actually a, a photographer and videographer, so he's kind of in it for the pictures of these people. Um, but then they start talking and um, just listening to their their stories and how how many of them are so similar. Um, and then the other interesting one was uh, this guy that actually really had um, OCD, and I it was really eye opening <laughs> for me to to just hear him explain. Um, the problems that he has in, in the counting or, you know, to, to explain it in, a, in such a profound way. Um, so anyway, if you're interested or if you're feeling like your life is really miserable, <laughs> watch these and then you'll feel so much better about where you are in your life. But, or maybe you won't, but um, it, is, it is quite eye-opening. So. Anyone else want to ask Victoria anything? Alex. And what's that on? It's, it's called the Soft White Underbelly. His name is Mark Leita, L-A-I-T-A. -I, oh, yes. I watch it. Oh, yeah. The cop's name is Mike Dow. Yes, Mike like where, Dow. Where do you find it? It's on um, YouTube. YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's, he's just uh, has this whole channel of these interviews of um, all different types of people. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone so. want to ask Victoria anything? <laughs> all right, excellent. Yeah. There we go. Anyone else like to come on up? Why are they going to raise their hand? Oh, hey, Steve, uh, Sapinski, hey, Nancy. Um, for, and everyone out there in Zoom land, I don't know how many people see this every week, but we always invite you to come to Brooklyn 
192, is it 192 31st yeah. Street, uh, between 4th and 5th Avenue. Come on down and experience self center. Um, share, uh, listen to what people share, and then share your own thoughts and expand, you know, expand your, your, your view of things. Um, how, when did Pasquale open up the self center? Do you know what, how many years it's been now? 1968. So, what so is that's that? 55 years. So, 55 years of self center, and that says something. And we're still and we're still going today. Uh, it's still being carried on, and I think that's really, really awesome. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was, uh, every time someone gets up and speaks at the self center, this is a learning experience for the person who's speaking, and a learning experience for the people who are sitting out there and uh, in Zoom land. Pasquale talked. Yeah, for, I don't know, I, I came in like 1985. What year did he pass away? 2010. 2010. So, so from 85 to 2010, I mean, uh, he spoke every, every Thursday evening. And after he spoke, it wasn't like it was just words that he was speaking and then we walked out the door and that was it. It was words that he spoke that resonated with me. And I, I thought about them, I, I listened, I thought, I carried on that thought process while I was working, it was, things were coming to me. It, it wasn't just, oh, they spoke and, and that's it, he spoke and that was it. It was something that I, I took inside of me, I, it became part of me, it became me. And I hope that we're using, every person who gets up here has given us such great insights. So about two months ago, I said, I talked about this, I said that when we should palpate, we palpate people's spines, but we gotta move on past that. And you gotta start moving into like higher, higher, higher directions. And I talked about seeing, seeing where to adjust. So I hope you carry that with you because I carry it with me every day. Right? So Brian would say, or Pasquale would say, small sequential steps. So you just can't go from like palpation to like looking in somebody's eyes and saying, okay, now you're the heel. We're not at that level yet, but we can begin to step it up. We're self-centered. No one thinks like we think here. We're self-centered. That means so much. Come, enjoy, become part of the self center take it bring it into you make it part of you let's start moving further farther farther as Pasquale would say not further but farther let's let's start moving out let's become everything that we were meant to be chiropractic and what do you got to do you got to give everything you got Every day that you work, every day that you go in to adjust people, it's got to be everything you got. You can't leave it out. You can't leave some in there. It's got to be it all. You got to give it all to them. Chiropractic, chiropractic, chiropractic. We're going up. Now you want to ask Phil anything? Anyone? 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 Something about, I'll give you guys one more. Anyone ask Phil anything? Victoria. Have you always had that energy since uh, you started practice? You know, I kind of, um, yeah. I've always had that energy, but it's been refined uh, through self center. Anyone else want to ask Phil anything? Anyone? Anyone? One more time, anyone? Excellent. Right. Oh, hang on, I messed up. I messed up. Uh, I hit a cook timer or something. I don't know how I did it. Alright, I, I messed up somehow. Forget that. Does anyone else want to speak? Either in Zoom world, well, either Steve or we got some other people here. You don't have to, I don't like putting pressure yeah, on people.
Steve Osipinski. Let's see if we can hear you. Hello, hello. Can you hear me now? We hear you. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little choppy, but we'll do our can best. You hear me? Yes. Give him a thumbs up. It's choppy. Thumbs up. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. I have to point this away to you. It's up to hear uh, the unquestioned fellow man who can hear you off longer. It's not a real good question. Um, can you hear me? So, it's point is any. My phone's messed up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, <laughs> well, it worked at the tunnel, it's just tracking out the iron voice over. Alright. What is that? It, 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 it's choppy, so we really can't hear you, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm gonna pass it for stretching. Okay. And I heard the voice over the air and it just. Alright. Does anyone else that's here want to speak? You don't have to, but I'm gonna ask you. If not, we're gonna switch it over to me. All right then, so I'm going to go. So my name is Brian Patrick Corden, chiropractor, Jersey City, New Jersey. And it's good that Phil came up here because I've been doing a very deep review of Pasquale's stuff. Something told me you got to go deeper again and really get into the meaning of this man. Uh, so man, I'll give you a, a quick heads up. Pasquale was born in 1911. When he was three years old, he got uh, injured by a vaccine. And he was pretty much left for dead, but he survived it. And he, he was sickly his whole childhood. And he made a covenant with God, whatever gets me through this, I'll dedicate my life to it. So around 1930, he went to a chiropractor. The chiropractor helped him. He became a chiropractor. He went to World War II, got out of that. Well, he went to chiropractic school, World War II, came home, started a bit. I mean, he was a very busy chiropractor here in Brooklyn for many years. He started having these meetings in 1968. And like he would, and he's very busy, and then he finally passed away in 2010, March 1st. So that's a very quick review for you. Now, so in March, on March 17th, 1968, Pasquale was a professor at uh, the school, the chiropractic school, uh, I guess, in New York. And this student said, one of my people wants to talk to you. He's like, what? She wants to talk to you. Turned out she was a medium. Her name was Paula. So Pasquale went to Manhattan. She met her. She introduced him to his spiritual friends. And that's where he got the name Self Center that you see up there behind me. And he started these meetings. And he realized he, he um, got pushed. In, he walked through the door of spirituality. And then, that was 1968. So in 1980, he was told he has to retire from working in the office as a chiropractor and just do the spiritual work, which was very, very hard for him, but he did it. So now I just wanted to uh, set that up. So when I look at, when I think of Pasquale, one of the things he used to say was, he's like, if you just want to use logic and logistics and those things, you're not going to get the answer. You have to learn how to read, you have to learn how to like read, listen, hear the spiritual language and you have to learn how to live with that spiritual language. And when he was speaking to us, he was speaking to us with that spiritual language. So a lot of people really had a hard time understanding him because they were trying to use the logic of this system. And he's not on Zoom, but Phil Shimei would always ask Pasquale one thing, he asked him repeatedly, he goes, to what end Pasquale? about a certain topics, to what end? And the really is, Pasquale was to the end of the system. Because people would say, Pasquale would always say, it's not the end of the world, it's going to be the end of the system. Because this system we're in is wrong. So, he says, we have to learn how to personify this whole thing and tell it in a story to make people understand. So this is one of the ways he told it. He, he said, many years ago, People said to God, we don't need you anymore. We don't need you to rule us anymore. Leave us alone. Then he says, things got worse and worse and worse and worse. And there's like what some would say, the fall of man, meaning our consciousness, our awareness of who we really are was cut off. 
And the one thing I remember Fernando asked Pasquale something, if Pasquale just said to him, Fernando, just be aware. And we have to increase our awareness. So there's chiropractic. Now Pasquale had all this stuff, he's like, we got to get out of the water and get onto the land. And one of the things was, he said, when he spoke about the water, he meant it's like an illusion. Because if you put, suppose I have a big long stick, and I put it into a water, like a lake or something, and you think the stick's over here because it's like an illusion. They can't see it. It's like an illusion is seeing something that exists that really doesn't exist. And the reason why we have that is he calls this system the risk system. And to be in this risk system, this world we're in today, we had to take on a whole bunch of parts inside of our body to survive it. So now we're at this point, and I think we're really seeing it, especially the last few years, that this system is going away. This veil between us and the spiritual realm of things is going away. And chiropractic is helping us make a complete metamorphosis in our body. And I'll get to that in a second. Because last week, I, I was just... Um, when I first started coming to these meetings, it was in January of 1998. I had no background. I, I knew Pasquale, who he was, because when I was in, in 1992, I heard him speak at school. And I, when I was in chiropractic, when I started chiropractic school, and I heard him speak three, three times, twice, they called, these things called, um, I forget what they called them, but they, remember the field, they go in the gym, and assemblies, I think they called them. And the students would go, and, and, he, and I, he blew me away both times, but one time he came to the classroom, it was much more intimate. I said, wow, this guy's got something special. So I came down here, so the first time I went home, I threw up. I'm like, what, what was that about? I came back the next week, and the next meeting, I, they had me, uh, this room was, had, it was flooded, so we had the meetings in, in another room on the other side of this wall. And, of course, I, who they had me sit right next to? Pasquale. So, uh, the first meeting, I don't, I don't think I said anything. This meeting, I spoke, someone asked me something, my answer was way too long. And Pasquale goes, like this. And he goes, if someone asks you something, say yes, no, I don't know, or a brief explanation. When you talk too much, you get yourself in the trouble. Well, of course, it was directed right at me. And I, I took the message. He zapped me. I went home and I threw up again. <laughs> now, but this time it was more intense. I felt this intense pain right here. And next thing you know, I blacked out. I woke up. I was on the floor in my bathroom. It knocked me out. I said, oh, what is this place? But I've been coming here ever since, so I, have, I didn't stop. The reason why I'm telling you this story, that was January of 1998. So here we are in August of 2023. That's 20, more than 25 years ago. I woke up on Saturday. I didn't feel, I don't know, two, I threw up. I didn't feel well. Then I woke up again around... I forget, I don't remember, 4.30, 5, 5.30, something like that. I had that same pain in here. The exact same pain I felt in January of 1998, it, it, believe me. But this time I didn't pass out. But the reason why I'm saying this, he used to talk about this thing called the cannon center. You have your transverse colon. So when you eat something, it comes to your stomach, it goes to your small intestine, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, and you wreck them then out of you. But this is your transverse colon, called the cannon center. So you have a little quick, you know, anatomy physiology. It's called your parasympathetic. That comes from the bottom and comes here. The sympathetic comes from the top. And, but the problem is they're not connected. And the reason why he said this is a house divided will fall. And I swear to you the other day, I felt these two things connected me. And I was so dizzy. And I'm... I'm I grew up, my mother's from Ireland, having to, I grew up a workhorse. I didn't go to the office that day because I was so dizzy, I, I could barely stand. And I had to lie down, it was just Saturday, last Saturday, the whole day. And it took me to Sunday, and thank God I have Sora to take care of me recover. So let's get more into these changes. So Pasquale, he made this statement, he's like, when we became Israelites, we went down 1,400 feet below sea level. So the Dead Sea in Israel is 1,400 feet below sea level. And we went down there and we had to take on these parts. And he called it the risk system. 
And we, it's like we've been in like this valley for all these years, and now we're coming out of it. And how do you come out of it? Collect. And they say, when you're in the valley of darkness, you, you, you have those bull horns over here. You've got to grab the bull by the horns and steer it in the right places and direct ourselves out of this. Now, this whole metamorphosis business. Meta means, I'll write it, M-E-T-A. For that word, it means beyond. And the morph, M. O-R, if you want to put the E in the end, you can. That means form, but I'm, I'm going to make it this system. We're really going beyond this system. What do I mean by this risk system? The other part of it is, what he was saying, we'll get into about the soul. We all have our soul, but it's like, when, when we said to God, we don't need you anymore, let us rule ourselves. The disconnect was our soul was no longer connected. At least our awareness of our soul was not connected. Let's say this is God did. And we're, so we're, we're off here. This is your magnetic north, this is true north. So in this system, that's why we have all these wars and all this crime, because that's what we have inside of us. Your immune system is a system of war. He's like, we don't need that anymore. When you have that peace inside of you, you won't need a system of war inside of you, therefore there won't be a system of war outside of here. And I really feel that's coming in, but he also said there are these dark forces out there. And they, all they want you to do is complain. All they want you to do is focus on the bad stuff. Keep repeating the damage, repeating the damage, repeating the damage. They don't want you to focus on knowing that you really are connected to God. They want to do everything they can to keep you away from that. But, his wife Elita passed away November 13th, 1998. We had a meeting that Thursday night, November 12th. So she passed away around 3.40 a.m. It was a Friday, November 13th. I know I'm jumping around, but I'll, I'll tie it together. So we go 11 years later, November 12, 2009, we had a meeting right here in this room. Pasquale, if you watch the videos, he has a bib on because he made ravioli for all of us, for Elita's honor. And Elita was an amazing lady. So what he said was, what Elita did for us was at that moment, she conquered the darkness where we finally got to that point where the light has taken over. The light has taken over. And even though we have these dark forces, we have to, like I said, take that bull by the horn, direct it in the right places. And by working through that dark matter, by working through all that stuff, and keep working, and keep working, and keep working, you finally get through it. The light only sees the good that comes out of the evil. Because there's a saying from the Bible, and the darkness comprehended it not. So what does that mean? Once the light gets out of the darkness, the darkness cannot take it back. So once, so for me, D.D. Palmer's thing about chiropractic was it's, he wanted to know is what is life? He spoke about your spiritual existence throughout eternity. That's what this guy was focused on. And Pasquale took that and he told it in his own way and he added it on. And now I believe we're at the point we're self and we're about to take all Pasquale's stuff and really just know it. And we can, we can add on our own way. Because I'm looking at him go through all these things he speaks about sublimation. We don't need water. Sublimation is meaning you go, you ever see dry ice? It's like, it's a solid. And if you pour something on it, it doesn't go to water. It goes right from the solid to, the, to a gas, they call it. But he would call it going from solid to air or going from bone to spirit. And Nancy Brown was talking about Ezekiel 37, value of the bones, which was probably spoke about many times, which was, I'm not going to give every detail, but pretty much God's saying, hey, Ezekiel, look. Look at those dried up bones over there. Pasquale didn't like the word skeleton because it means dried bones. And he says, you, I'm going to, I'll give you the words in the spirit. I'll give you the words and, and Ezekiel would say what God told him. And then next thing you know, these bones come together. Then all of a sudden... The sinew, meaning the, the nerves, the muscles, all that comes together, and then the skin, then the life was in, in, into the bones. And Pasquale would all say the spirit travels through the bones, but the bones have been so polluted all these years, and I don't think 
that's so I'm really my body feels more light. You know, I've lost a lot of weight. It just came off of me. I certainly wasn't trying to. It just came off of me. I guess I'm finally. I feel, especially after the experience last week, I feel such lightness in me and such peace and calmness. And I, I'm aware of these things because I've been coming down here all these years. I've been hearing people speak about it. I still pay attention. I, I have to go back to Pasquale's things because now I have, I'm at a consciousness where I understand this stuff much better now. And it's really about what he called becoming crystalline tissue. He said he touched the spiritual being once when he touched it was crystalline tissue. What, am I, what does that mean, crystalline tissue? Crystals are perfectly aligned. And when things are perfectly aligned, it's like light can travel through them easier. And that's really what we're becoming. I know he said a lot of things that most people just thought he was a weirdo or a whack on me. And I, I was around. I saw people be quite nasty to him. He didn't care because he wasn't interested. And Jim Bradman pointed out once, he's like, there's a lot of people who were threatened by Pasquale. Not because he was a threat to them that he, he would do something to them or he was going after them, but what he spoke about was making them uncomfortable because they thought they were going to lose a buck. And people started following what he was saying, just talking about just serve people, focus on serving people, and God will give you, will just provide whatever you need. God will take care of the rest, he would say, or the rest will take care of itself. Serve people with the pure intentions of the Holy Spirit, and God will provide all your needs. And I'm living proof of that. Now, he also made these things about we're all twisted up. And he spoke about a little more anatomy and physiology. You, know, you got your vertebral column come. We don't, he didn't like to use the word spinal column because spine means thorn. He's like, I don't want to be stuck with a thorn. He said, so vertebral column comes down and inside of that it protects your spinal cord. And that comes down to a thing called the cauda equina, which called, it means horse's tail. Equina means, means uh, horse and the cauda means tail. It's for Latin. And, and he gave this big speech about, look at that, it's all twisted up, and it's not aligned, everything should be coming out in the carpenter square, meaning a right angle. And he was like, this is the cause of all our problems, we're all twisted up. And we are twisted up inside. And we really have to get to the point where our consciousness is where our heart's in the center. Because he also had the heart went and made it left field. But if you look at it, when, when a baby's developing, the first three months, the heart's in the center. Then it went over. So we have to really, and I truly believe our consciousness is starting to, is back here now. We're starting to really connect with our heart in the center. And by doing that, you might feel dizzy. You might have to throw up. You might have to lie down. You might do this. You might do that. I'm just saying, don't, don't be worried. Don't be upset. Just allow yourself to go through it. If you have to take an extra rest, take an extra rest. Because there's so many people right now, I see them coming in. They can sense this. And I had those cards printed up. When Pasquale passed away, Glenn Scarpelli made these cards up and they were beautiful. It was a photo of Pasquale in a tuxedo. Holding, you know, holding his hand like that, like the old Italiano way. And he looked great. And on the back, it had this thing, and it had this, this writing and it said, but how spiritual sickness and suffering is non-existent. It's only because of this lack of faith in our own power and existence, in our own power and existence that we have this, um, what is it called? That, that, that we have this, I forget, oh my God, I'm tired. Suffering. Yeah, that, that all, that we realize that all the suffering and sick disease is really non-existent. It's like, for the spiritually inclined, you lose nothing and gain everything. He's like, when there's a spiritual shift in the conscience of the world, you see people have a shift towards chiropractic that they're truly all about. This woman called me up today and she said when she's having a tough time, she reads that card. And it helps her get through it. So what is this shift? What is this spiritual conscience of the world? We're watching it. It happened because we come down here all the time and we live this way. And by doing this, we're seeing it now in the outside world. And the people that are resisting it, they're having a hard time. It's, it's could resist, RE means back, and cistere means to stand. They're standing back because they're afraid to walk into that light. Because sometimes you have to walk into that light, you have to give up everything, thinking you're, gonna lose, you're not going to lose anything. Remember, 
the spiritual inclining, there's nothing, you're going to gain everything. You're going to gain an awareness of everything. And that's scaring a lot of people. And for these young chiropractors, I'm starting to know some of them. All they do is talk about get people in and they want to get a, what, a brand themselves. I'm not even sure what that means, to be quite honest, but it has something to do with marketing. Uh, and I always ask them, and when they come in, what are you going to do? Do you have the goods to serve that person? And they think I'm a lunatic. Are you? I say, I go, because you can come in, you can run your mouth all you want, but if you don't know how to use your hands, they're going to leave. Maybe some might stay because they're too polite and don't want to upset you, but for the most part, you're going to be sitting around twiddling your thumbs because no one's going to be coming in. It's like, what are you talking about? They say, I say, focus on serving people. What does that mean? Ask your spiritual friends to help you serve this person and they'll do it. But you have to really have, like Pasquale says, the pure intentions of the Holy Spirit. And that man had it. And we, for those of us who knew him and saw him, we saw him go through it. And we saw him go through it at the very end. I think he stuck around probably longer than he had to just to make sure we really saw it. Because he, he could hardly get up those stairs towards the end. So what, what Pasquale gave us was, he says, I'm imaging myself out to you. Take the image, take it. He'd all say, God's an imager, not a creator. He said, God created, a, the word create means to, uh, to bring forth. So God created or brought forth the heavens and the earth via mankind, meaning we brought that forth. We bring all these things forth. We just have to remember that we are that image and can and connect ourselves to that image. And chiropractic is helping us do this. Pasquale, that's really all he was about. He just told us in a story. So if you go to the Self Center website, if you look, there's a bunch of videos. There's also, if you look, there's video transcripts. There's videos. It's all, everything he said is written down in those videos. Some, some people like to read them, and that's nice too. Now, I put those videos together, and a quick thing was, Pasquale passed away March 1st, 2010. My mother had been very ill for quite some time. She passed away May 19th, 2010. So I'm like, man, I don't feel like going anywhere. I don't really want to talk to anybody. I never had a computer. I had zero computer skills. So this guy, Arabac Desarian, showed me how to use a computer and how to do the editing. So I went through and I watched all those, I watched a bunch of videos and it just came to me, put them together in all that format and put it together and those video series you see with Timmy was divine inspiration. I went back and watched all those and I look back at it now, it's a miracle how all that came together. It's a story really about chiropractic. It's, it's Pasquale telling a story about the spirituality of chiropractic. And I'm going to leave you with this thing at the end. He, he speaks about... The, the last one, it's only like 48 seconds. He talks about leprechauns, because I'm Irish. He used to like to throw out leprechaun stuff. But he says, if you catch, and this is folklore from Ireland, if you catch a leprechaun, don't let him go, no matter what he says, you hold on to him. If you need, when you go to a store and you need something, and it costs $10.32, you think about it, you reach in your pocket, and you're going to have $10.32. Previously, when you walked in the store, there was no money in your pocket. So each time you go in, you have the leprechaun, and to me, that's chiropractic. Just think you always have that leprechaun, whatever that person needs, you'll have it to help them get what they need. Not that I could do it for them, but we could help them do it. And Pasquale was strong, and he shocked a lot of people with stuff he says. And he used to say, if I, did I shock you? And he goes, if I didn't, then you're dull. So this guy zapped us. So I'm, I mean, there's a lot more I can get into, but I don't want to overload it. But I'm just saying, this guy was about the spirituality of chiropractic, and he lived it. And I know the people down here live it. And when you really look at this guy, I really sense that we're finally going to go down deep. Because lately I've seen we've been tired around here, and, pe and people have had a lot of personal issues that's rough stuff, and all these crazy things in our lives. I'm just saying, if you feel a little wacky or this or that, don't worry about it. Just know you're going to be okay. Make sure you get adjusted by your self-centered crew. And we're, just know that that shift has occurred in us first, to, before we see on the outside. And now we're seeing it on the outside. So that's what I want to say.
Phil's going to come up and do the, the moderating. Any questions for Brian? Sorry? When you're not in the office, um, say you're just at the park with Jack or something, yeah. but people come to you, how do you like evangelize? How do you, how, do you talk to people about chiropractic? Only if they bring in it, every day? If they bring it up. I say very little to people. They have to sense it from me, because I live it. And if, they, and if they sense it from me that I have something to offer them that could help them, they're going to come to me, and they're going to bring it. But, or else, and there are people who come in the office, that I, the way I spoke tonight, that I talk to them like, but that's only a handful. Mm -hmm. I, I let them come to me, and then I just, if, if I'm guided to say it to them, then I say it to them. Any other questions? I'll just add on. Anybody? I'll just add on. There are people who watch these videos who come in to me and they come in and they talk about them. Good. One guy's a medical doctor. He loves the videos. Loves them. <laughs> His brother's a pharmacist. He loves the videos. So this guy's reaching everyone. And I see these guys all the time in the street, and they all say, you're doing it, Brian, keep up the good work, keep up the good work. Meanwhile, the chiropractors call me a weirdo and a wacko, and that's hilarious. <laughs> Since uh, last Saturday, when you had that experience, have you noticed the shift, like, with your work? It's so much easier for me now. It's e in what way? Every way. I feel light. When I just, I feel like I'm floating when I'm in there. I feel like I'm actually floating. People who are normally like rocks, it's like my hands are almost melting. It's like they're melting underneath me. I always make, I don't like to say work on people, I work with people. I'm very particular about how I say things. But I just, and I feel people are, are, are feel more at ease around me now and they're able to have more breakthroughs. So that's the, what I, and I just noticed that in every aspect of my life. Oh, Alex, another question? Have you ever felt that before and lost it? Not like this. This is something very This different. is way more intense. This is a big breakthrough. Nancy? Uh, I hope you can, can, can you hear me? Yes, a little. Choppy. If you want to call me, we can do it that way. <clears throat> Do you want to do this? <laughs> when you work with somebody, you send to their heart. Mabude Center? I, I, I can't hear you. When you work with somebody, do you sense that they are moving their center? Oh. Yes. Their heart? Yes, I do. I do. Especially even more so this past week. And I can really sense the people who are resisting, and I make sure I have to. I have to pull back because they're not ready for that. Because if you do a force job on someone and they're and they're and they raise their conscience too fast, that's very damaging. Very, very. I had, I had a discussion with someone be, when I was done with the office about that. I'm like, you're going too. This is too too much for you. Too fast. Let's slow it down. Because a lot of people like feel wait, wait, small sequential steps. You go too fast. The force job you can get hurt. Anybody else? All right, Brian. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Excellent. Excellent.